So there was a time right in between the mainstream introduction of DVDs and before Blu-rays and HD DVDs and all these more high def formats had come out. Right in that little intersection, right before that, there was a brand of DVDs called Superbit DVDs. And they were touted as being higher resolution and higher quality than a normal DVD. And some people considered it just a gimmick. But for me, I actually think there is some improvement on Superbit DVDs. Here in this video today, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on Superbit. So stay tuned. So initially, what are Superbit DVDs? Essentially, in the simplest terms, they're just a brand of DVD. They were started by Sony, and they essentially just sacrificed all the special features and bonus content that would come on the normal DVD discs of that era, just to maximize space for like picture quality, audio quality, things like that. And a lot of people really thought they were just a gimmick, that they were basically just made to try and get enthusiasts to pay more money for another version of a movie they may have already owned. But for me, I actually think there is some benefit to having Superbit DVDs, and I have a small amount of Superbits here in my collection. And I actually try and buy them whenever I find them out in the wild for a decent price, just because I think they are kind of cool. First, I just want to say, I don't have any actual equipment to test the bit rates and file sizes and all that sort of stuff. There are some other channels here on YouTube and other kind of like, editorial things that were made online on various websites over the years that have discussed whether or not the actual encoding on a Superbit DVD is better than a normal DVD with varying results. I, I don't really know. And I'm not trying to get into all of that with all the technical aspects and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not even really trying to talk about like the history of Superbit DVDs and you know why it was a failed form of DVD media and all that stuff. I I'm not really concerned about that. When you look at the actual packaging, for example, for the Anaconda disc, it is very bare bones. It's just a standard snapper case. It has this kind of cool, just very basic metallic silver metal, gunmetal kind of uh, pattern on here. And then it just has kind of poster art. And that kind of goes through the whole line of super bits up until you get to some of the very last super bit DVDs that were produced. But it's just very bare bones. Uh, the back is very bare bones as well, and the spine is kind of cool. Now this one is actually one of the more recent ones I picked up. I got this at a thrift store. It does not have the slip cover. So when you look, say, here at Bad Boys, this one has the slip cover, and it basically is identical to the actual cover art on the regular DVD case. But what is cool about this is if you get in kind of close and feel the Super Bit logo at the top is embossed and it's just raised a little bit. And it almost gives me kind of like Terminator 2 kind of vibes, you know, with the shiny metallic embossed kind of logo, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, so this is what they would normally look like. But like I said, my Anaconda disc doesn't have the slip cover because I got that recently from a thrift store. So using Bad Boys as an example, because the Anaconda disc is in the player, so you can see the menu behind me. All the discs and everything on the inside, except for a few of the later releases, are pretty much all the same. You get just this basic red disc, which I do like that color of red. It's very bright, very br vibrant. You know, it is kind of cool to look at. But it just has kind of the logo, says super bit, just very basic bare bone stuff. I believe originally, not all of the ones I have here have these because they're all used, uh, but originally they would come with the little sleeve, little insert that would have the cover art uh, on one side and then the chapter selections on the other. So yeah, this is basically all you would get on a super bit release, uh, especially the early releases like these. It's very bare bones. There's nothing too extravagant about it. So behind me, I have uh, the Anaconda super bit DVD. You can see the menu up behind me. It's very bare bones. It does not have any like special features, no bells and whistles, no pageantry, none of that stuff. It's just a very basic background with very basic menus. That was part and parcel for what Superbit was trying to do. But despite the fact that it was very bare bones and very basic, that was not the main selling point 
on these DVDs for people who did want to buy them. The main selling point was the audio and visual quality that's on these discs. So all the DVDs that are in the Super Bit line carried both the Dolby Digital and DTS track. For me, because I'm someone who really strives to recreate a theatrical style environment with a lot of aspects here in my home theater, having both the DTS and a Dolby Digital soundtrack is actually really cool, especially on these catalog films. And I've always preferred DTS on this era of like media, just because I felt during this time period, DTS, at least in the home market, maybe not so much theatrically for films released at the time, but in the home market DVDs of this time frame, the DTS tracks usually always have a little bit more like oomph to them and a little bit more bass, you know? So I've always preferred the DTS tracks on stuff like this. Also, by the way, one thing I think is really cool that I really enjoy because I'm kind of a nerd about this stuff, the vintage DTS digital theater opening that's on these catalog titles is always cool to me. I love it. So that's talking about audio, but the picture quality is a whole nother thing. The video quality was supposed to be encoded at a higher bit rate. And I'm not going into all the technical aspects, so I don't know if that's true or not. So if you do a quick YouTube search for Superbit DVD, you're gonna find other channels that have a lot more tech savvy uh, mindsets than I do that can break that stuff down to find out if these discs were really telling the truth or if they really were just a gimmick, which honestly it doesn't really matter that much to me. I really enjoy the fact that all the video files that are on these discs look very theatrical to me. They look like a theatrical print. They look like what I remember seeing in my local movie theater at that time and place. So when I was growing up in Chicago, going to the little like uh, dollar budget cinema that was really close to my house and seeing movies that were, you know, second run that were right at the end of their theatrical run before the new releases would come out on VHS or a little bit later on DVD. Watching these films back like Anaconda and a few of my other ones that are from the mid to late 90s, early 2000s, the video transfers and, and files that are on these discs really give me the feel of what I remember watching at that time in the theater. And that really holds a lot of weight to me because I really enjoy trying to replicate that type of nostalgic feel here in my home theater. Some people talk about they don't like little bits of like scratches or dust or little like, you know, just imperfections in the actual image quality and things. But to me, I kind of enjoy that and there is a certain charm and nostalgic kind of feeling to stuff like that. And not all standard DVD releases have that. A lot of times some standard DVD releases use a lot of like image uh, enhancements, well, enhancements, uh, you know, in DNR and like uh, just artifact stuff that comes up through the processing and whatever. And I really do feel like the Superbit discs tend to keep the print that they sourced the image from pretty well intact. So even if there is some minor issues, you know, film grain and scratching or just little imperfections, it's still there and represented. And I do enjoy that in certain instances because there is some charm to it and some like nostalgic feelings for me about going to the movie theaters when I was younger. So despite the fact these may or may not actually live up to what they say they do in terms of the actual encoding and the amount of space for the video transfer. At least to me, these do look a little bit more theatrically accurate to my memory of what I remember watching some of these movies growing up. And so that holds a lot of weight with me. Uh, but like I said, they may not actually be any better than a DVD. Maybe it's just my uh, buyer's sensibilities trying to justify buying these. Uh, but at least to me, I think they do look a little bit better than regular DVDs of that time period. Let's talk about how you can find these nowadays. Uh, basically, you're gonna find them used. You can find them on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and other secondhand websites. 
uh, which I've only purchased one out of the, I don't know, six or seven that I have here online. Otherwise, everything else I've just purchased from thrift stores that I found over the years. When you buy them online, they're gonna average about the usual used DVD prices, uh, depending on the seller and, you know, what condition it's in, because sometimes you can find them new, sometimes they're used, sometimes they have the slip cover, sometimes they don't. Uh, but they're gonna average usually between like two, three dollars up to maybe like five, six dollars. But they're pretty average priced. And like I said, I've purchased all of mine except for one at just local thrift stores over the years. So I've really only spent one or two dollars, three dollars maybe, for these DVDs when I find them at the thrift store. Super Bits are basically a dead format. Uh, they, they went out of production years and years ago. And like I said, there's a lot of uh, talk and conjecture about whether or not they were just a gimmick and if they actually lived up to the actual hype about, oh, that there are these better DVD quality discs. You know, and honestly, I don't really care about all that. Uh, to me, the audio and video quality is pretty good. You know, whether or not it's technically better than any normal DVD is, you know, kind of up for debate. But at least for me, I really do feel like a lot of these releases have that vintage, nostalgic 90s, early 2000s movie theater feel, which I really enjoy. So with that, we're gonna wrap up this video. Uh, like I always do, I wanna say thank you to everybody who's watched any of my content, who's liked or subscribed to my channel. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I, like I always do, I feel like a broken record. I, I really am humbled by that and really appreciate all the in involvement and engagement everyone's had with me. And uh, keep your eyes out for more content. I'm slowly but surely like trying to get content pumped out here and edited and put up on the channel. Uh, I really try and make as much time as I can in between my normal job to try and get on here and do that. So be on the lookout. I have some more videos coming out soon and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.